Hi, I'm Chung Nguyen for Notebooks.com and Gotta Be Mobile, and in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Sprint MiFi 3G 4G mobile hotspot made by Novatel Wireless. The device can connect up to five simultaneous devices, sharing its mobile broadband connection over Wi-Fi, and has a number of new features that the 3G only MiFi mobile hotspot does not have. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features and the hardware. Inside the retail packaging box for the Sprint MiFi 3G 4G, you have the MiFi mobile hotspot here at the top. Lift up this tray and you have a variety of manuals and the terms of service agreement with Sprint. Underneath that you have a cloth protective pouch to carry the MiFi around. A wall charger and a separate USB cable to charge the device at your laptop or to connect the device directly to your laptop so you're not broadcasting your Wi-Fi network ID. There's also a bag here, postage paid, so you can send in an old device to recycle to Sprint. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features of the MiFi. Hardware-wise, the Sprint MiFi 3G 4G mobile hotspot connects to Sprint CDMA eVideo network on 3G or to Sprint's uh, 4G WiMAX network, which promises speeds of between 3 to 6 megabits per second on the download side. In usage, I found speeds were about 3 to 4 megabits on the download side and about 1 megabits per second on the upload side. The device has a brushed uh, aluminum-like look on the front, which differs from the Verizon 4G LTE mobile hotspot, also made by Novatel, which features a glossy plastic look on the front. Both devices have a dark chrome-like border. And then on the side and the back, you have a matte rubberized finish. On the back, you do have a sticker here, which shows you what the SSID for the unit is, along with the password to connect to the network. You can go ahead and change both the SSID and the password in the web um, login later at your leisure. On the top of the device, what's new here, you have the e-ink display, which shows a number of features, including your signal strength, the battery, and GPS location. If you're connected to 4G, you'll see a blue light, while it will show a green light while you're connected to Sprint's 3G network. On the front side here, you also have a micro SD card slot, so the device can serve as a file um, hosting server so you can host some files and share it in your network. There's also a micro USB charger and sync port here so you can go ahead and connect it to the uh, wall adapter or to your computer directly to charge the battery. There is a secure network button here, the WPS button, which you can also activate as well by pressing in. To remove the back battery cover, you would need to push and hold down here and then just try to detach the battery from the or the battery cover from the side and it will reveal a capacious 1500 milliamp hour battery. Let's go ahead and connect the MiFi to our computer and see what um, some of the um, dashboard and the logins are. Now that we're connected to the MiFi network, all you have to do is look at the sticker on the back of the MiFi unit and look for the SSID and then type in your password to connect on your Windows or Mac machine. Once you're connected, if you want to access the settings menu, which is a browser interface, all you have to do is open a browser and type in myfi.mlp, which will bring you up to the MiFi OS, which shows you a couple of widgets. Here you have a GeoSearch widget, which connects you to a map, and it will show you your location. There's also a weather widget, which uh, taps into the device's GPS and also accesses the Sprint's um, network to pull up the location based or the weather based on your location. To access additional settings like the device's IP address or to go ahead and change your SSID or your password to the network, you do need to click on the login button here at the top and then the default password for that is admin. 
which you can change later if you wish. So once you're logged in, it will show you here um, your battery life, the Wi-Fi connection strength, GPS, and the Sprint network uh, connection. So here we have two bars on the Sprint WiMAX, which is the 4G network. Let's go ahead and tap Settings, where you can go ahead and change to show what's, uh, what type of widgets you want to enable or disable. You can go ahead and change your Wi-Fi settings as well. You can also filter devices by the, um, the Mac filter, which will only allow trusted devices to access your Sprint mobile broadband connection. Or you can go ahead and change um, either the SSID, which so far shows Sprint My 540-82-618 secure. You can go ahead and change it to say, gotta be mobile, My Fi. And then here's the password, which you can also change as well. You can choose between a WPA2 personal password or a WPA slash WPA2 mix mode password. And then you can go ahead and hit apply. Here's also the WPS net, uh, setup. So you can go ahead and if you want to push it, then it will create a more secure network for you to access. There's also a wireless wide area network access, so you can go ahead and change um, the settings so that the device either connects exclusively to just 3G if you're in a 3G only area or if 4G is preferred so it will automatically connect to a WiMAX network where available and if a WiMAX connection isn't detected then it will default back to a 3G connection. You can also adjust your roaming as well so that it's either automatic or you're only of, on your home network. And then on the router, you can also set up port filtering and other settings as well. So this is a basic overview of the MiFi OS and Sprint by default has enabled two widgets so you do have the geolocation widget and the weather widget which is based on your GPS data on the MiFi. Let's go ahead and take a look and compare the MiFi to other popular mobile broadband routers on the market today. So here you have the Sprint 3G 4G WiMAX MiFi and here we have these Verizon 4G LTE uh, MiFi unit. Both devices are 3G and 4G compatible for their respective networks. In comparison to the Verizon unit, which has a more glossy front versus the brushed aluminum-like look on the Sprint version, the Sprint version also is a little bit more narrow and smaller than the Verizon version. There are also a number of differences as well. On the Sprint version, you do have the micro SD card slot and the charging port here on the front with the LED indicator to indicate 3G or 4G network connection. On the comparable Verizon model, on the front side here, you only have the, um, the LED indicator for network connection. Also on the Verizon model, the charging port is on the back and here's the antenna connection. If you want to connect to an external antenna, it's on the back side versus on the Sprint model, which is on the bottom side. Also, you can see that the back battery cover is a little bit different, but both batteries are the same or both devices uses the same type of battery, so the batteries are interchangeable. The Verizon 4G LTE MiFi unit also eschews the micro SD card slot, so you can't sh uh, use the MiFi as a network sharing device on the Verizon MiFi model. The Verizon model does promise a little bit faster uh, 3G and 4G access speed. 4G speeds on Verizon hovers around 6 to 12 megabits per second on the download side and between 2 to 5 megabits per second on the upload side. Here's the GSM HSPA um, MiFi from AT&T which is also made by Novatel. This unit also features the micro SD card slot as well as a micro um, USB charge and sync port here. 
This unit, however, doesn't have the uh, e-ink um, display which shows the signal strength, battery life, and GPS connection. You do have to write, rely exclusively on this power button which glows different colors to indicate um, between different connection types and various settings on the MiFi. The AT&T model does, however, have the same or similar type of MiFi OS that the Sprint 3G 4G model has. As you can see here, all three um, Novatel units have about the same um, thickness and width to them. They all use um, a similar 1500 milliamp hour battery. On the Sprint model, I found that battery life is between 4 to 5 hours. I usually get about 4.5 hours in 4G connectivity. Compared that to the Sprint Overdrive, this is the original Overdrive and not the Overdrive Pro, you do have a little bit less information that's displayed through the e-ink display. On the Overdrive Pro, you have um, connectivity here for 4G, which is displayed here, rather than looking at the LED indicator light. You can also tell how many people are connected to your network via the LCD display here. However, the Sprint MiFi compared to the Overdrive has longer battery life and runs a lot cooler. Let's go ahead and wrap up with some of our final conclusions and thoughts on the Sprint 3G 4G Novatel MiFi. The Sprint 3G 4G MiFi hotspot from Novatel retains the compact form factor or footprint from the original 3G only MiFi. The size is about the size of a credit card, so here you can see that it's um, a little bit larger than a California ID card. The device is also a little bit thicker to accommodate a larger 1500 milliamp. Uh, our battery which provides about four to five hours of 4G connectivity. It also has an e-ink display which gives you more information than just the regular LED indicator on the original 3G MiFi from Sprint. Compared to the Sprint Overdrive, which is Sprint's first 3G 4G mobile hotspot unit, the Overdrive is made by Sierra Wireless and the MiFi here is made by Novatel. The 3G, 4G, Sierra wireless overdrive. In that unit, I've experienced connectivity issues and also heat problems when I use the device for extended period of time. And Xavier had commented on Gotta Be Mobile how the performance of the overdrive was not acceptable for him in daily use. In my experience with the MiFi, I found that those issues were not apparent and that Novatel did a great job to provide a great out-of-box user experience. Also, when I connected the overdrive continuously to a wall charger and used that device as a mobile hotspot for two weeks straight, what happens was that the original battery on the device started um, bulging out. So here, you do have an expanded battery that looks like it's about to explode. Additionally, the device ran extremely hot and was hot to the touch, whereas on the MiFi unit from Novatel, I didn't experience any heat issues when I connected the device continuously to a wall charger for two weeks straight and tried to use the device as my home wireless modem rather than using my DSL or cable modem connection. All in all, while the overdrive provides a lot more information on the LCD screen compared to the e-ink display, of the Novatel MiFi unit, I would say and recommend to users to choose the Novatel MiFi over the Overdrive based on my experiences and because the MiFi provided a far more reliable connection and also does not suffer from the heat issues or heat problems that the original Overdrive did on Sprint's 4G WiMAX Now network. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and today's a great day to be mobile. Thanks for watching.